In the eerie silence of the night, Barnaby heard them again. The whispers of the damned, slithering through the cracks of his crumbling abode, tainting the stale air with their venomous secrets. He knew very well that the walls didn't just have ears. They had voices, too. Voices that didn't rest, echoing long after the light receded from the grim windows of his ancestral home. As these spectral murmurs intensified, each one clawed deeper into his soul than any tangible adversary could, challenging his grip on the frayed edges of sanity. Echoes of the past, Barnaby's great-grandfather had been an oddity, a man shrouded in occult practices and whispered about in the dim corners of their small New England town. It was told that he made a pact with entities from beyond the veil, tainting the very foundation of the sprawling Victorian manse that now served as Barnaby's prison. With every generation, the whispers grew louder, and the house, more sentient, almost as if it breathed a sinister life of its own, feeding on the fears and foibles of its inhabitants. The house, with its towering gothic spires and leering gargoyles, seemed to stare back at you, alive and seething with unspeakable secrets. As Barnaby roamed its dilapidated halls, the eyes of ancestral portraits followed, their gazes piercing, knowing, and judging, as if resenting his very presence. The whispers, initially mere murmurs, had matured into voices so distinct he could almost assign them names. They spoke of doom, of coming dread, each echo a reminder of a curse that refused to be forgotten. It began subtly, shadows lurking longer than natural cold spots in midsummer's heat, and reflections that seemed disjointed from reality. As these phenomena intensified, so did Barnaby's obsession with uncovering the truth behind his family's curse. The more he delved into ancient tomes and diaries left behind by long-dead relatives, the more entangled he became in their arcane lore. Night after night he was found poring over crumbling pages by the light of a flickering candle, driven by a maddening need to piece together fragments of forgotten rituals and demonic bargains. The voices capitalized on his weakened state, their insidious whispers weaving seamlessly into his thoughts, blurring the lines between the summoned and the summoner. His reality, now a grotesque tapestry of the house's morbid history intertwined with his own fracturing psyche, left him isolated, a lone warrior in a spectral war that clawed at the edges of his mind, threatening to pull him into oblivion. One stormy night, when the wind howled like the damned souls themselves, Barnaby resolved that he would not be devoured by the darkness of his ancestry. Armed with sagely advice from an old tome and a will fortified by desperation, he confronted the source of the whispers in the heart of the house, the cursed library, where it all began. Standing among the arcane scriptures and ominous tomes, I chanted incantations that were older than the house itself, each word a defiance against the spectral assault. Thunder cracked sharply as if the very heavens contested his audacity. With every uttered syllable the house trembled, and the whispers grew into a cacophony of screams, fighting back with a fury born of centuries. But Barnaby, fueled by a newfound strength, a mix of fear, anger, and hope, stood resolute. As dawn broke, the voices simmered down to a sullen murmur, beaten back, but not destroyed. Exhausted and trembling, I knew this was but a temporary respite. The whispers would return. They always did. Yet, he had reclaimed a part of himself that night. A fragment of his sanity long surrendered to the malevolence that dwelled within these walls. The fight for his soul was far from over. But now, he faced it with a knowing heart and a braver spirit. Aware of the eternal struggle that lay ahead, yet undeterred. Barnaby's story is a chilling reminder that the real horrors often lie not in spectral apparitions, but in the shadows of our own minds. In his continued fight, there is both a warning and an encouragement to acknowledge our demons, both literal and metaphorical, and to challenge them with every fiber of our being.